Hello, everyone who is joining us live or joining us after the fact. How's everybody doing? I am your host, Sophia Lucia Parola. You'll see me in just a second. There we, there I am. Hello, everybody. Um, I, it is the 22nd annual Garden State Film Festival. 200 films this year from over 14 countries, March 21st to March 24th. And one of the films you can watch is this really beautiful short film called OCD. And here to talk to us about it is the person who made the film, Emma Lynn. Emma, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Me too. I'm really excited mm -hmm. to talk to you about this. And congratulations for not only thank making you. this film, but getting accepted into Garden State Film Festival. Thank you. So um, before we get into it, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. It's <laughs> Before we get into it, I'd love for you just to introduce yourself and mm -hmm. your titles in the film and then give us a little uh, synopsis about what OCD is about. OK, well, I'm Emma Lynn. I was director, producer and editor for this film. Um, and OCD is actually a adaptation film from a spoken word poem by Neil Hilborn um, called OCD. And I actually saw it. Um, a teacher in my English class freshman freshman year um, showed it to us and I immediately it resonated with me and so I adapted it into a film my senior year of high school wow. and so that's OCD. Beautiful I mean I love that you saw something and it resonated with you and then you made mm -hmm something out of it because so many people are going to watch this and it's going to resonate with them who haven't seen the yeah, poem because right. I never you introduced me to the poem so thank oh, you to really? this film and to you beautiful mm -hmm. poem and I saw this book really is. It's wonderful so you. freshman year you saw this and then you made mm -hmm. it senior year was this something that was bubbling up during those years or did it just come like how did it come about so I was in a film program through FPAC um, in the Monmouth County School District there's some programs and that was a performing arts program and so my senior year we were assigned to do a poetry adaptation film and I immediately knew that I was going to do this film up uh, this poem for this wow. film because I just absolutely love the poem and also it's a spoken word poem so adapting it into a film was a lot smoother of a uh, transition so mm -hmm. I was so excited to do it and um, it's really just about what it's like to live with OCD, but also how it can affect re your relationships when living with OCD. And so mm -hmm. I really wanted to share that. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, not only is it a high school film, which is just amazing. I love mm -hmm. that so many young artists are coming out and sharing their voice and making amazing projects, but also it is part of our Voices of Neurodiversity category. Mm -hmm. And it's that's amazing as well. But I, I want to talk about what you just touched on, that it was kind of easy to take something that was spoken word and make it into a film. Because I yeah. was thinking that was a little difficult because your wonderful actor, who I'm going to ask who you got the cast, had his yeah. own, like it was very different than Neil's version mm -hmm. spoken word. It was like he kind of made it, made it his own. So yeah. can you tell me how you found your cast and what it was like changing Neil's spoken word to what we hear in the film? So... The main cast member, Jack Vaughn, he and I went to middle school together and he is a phenom phenomenal actor and we used him a lot in our FPAC films um, and he didn't go to, to the same school as us. He wasn't in the FPAC program, but we all were friends with him and we knew he was so talented and he had previously portrayed um, somebody else that had OCD and had acted as someone with OCD prior. And I knew that he was the perfect person for the part. And he is a very intuitive actor and um, takes direction so easily and so quickly. And when we were recording the voiceover, I was just enamored by how easily he took the direction and made that poem his own in its performance and mm -hmm. it was really we played the footage and he spoke over top where it was going to be and that really helped with transitioning from spoken word poem to film 
Wow. So interesting. And speaking of like you watched the footage first and then did that voiceover, mm -hmm. how was it writing this? Because you had the layout of what, you know, the script was going to be, but how was it developing those shots? Was that all pre-planned or you kind of went with the flow as you were filming? What was that like? So yes, I did turn it into a screenplay and I planned out everything visually that I wanted to do. And then I also went with my cinematographer, John Stillwagon, and we created a shot list. Um, and so we already pre-planned all of that. And so when it came down to um, the actual production and filming, um, it went a lot smoother and we knew exactly what we wanted to do ahead of time. And then I was able to take those shot sheets and use them for when I was recording the voiceover um, to organize it that way as well. So. Wow. And shout out to John, who yes. we wish was with us today. How, how did you know, John, have you worked with him before? What was it like mm -hmm. getting him as a DP? Um, so he was also part of my program and I had worked with him um, all throughout our program. Um, and so I love his work as a cinematographer and he's so talented. So I asked him to do camera for me and uh, that him and I think very similarly with how we wanted to do each shot. Uh, when we were planning out the shot sheet, we both were like, we envision um, a God's eye, like going, like moving down. And at the same time, we would say the same things and it was perfect. Um, we perfect both really had the same vision. Yeah. Yeah, that's a dream to work with someone who can just kind of see what you're seeing because it's so hard exactly. sometimes to like, like, no, I'm seeing this. So that's a yeah. great collaboration. Wow. And we talked a little before we started this interview. This is your directorial debut, yes, right? Yes, it is. I'm usually a wow. screenwriter, producer, or actress, and I always kind of put myself in that bubble and never really ventured out anywhere else. And I was, I had to do my own personal poetry adaptation project. And I was not confident in my directing abilities, um, but I went into it with an open mind and really excited to be able to direct this specific piece. And I'm happy that I did this because now I feel like I can direct and I'm more confident in my directing skills and I hope to direct more now. I hope so too. Was this something that when you went into it you kind of just fell into it and it was like okay i'm i'm meant to direct or was it a little rocky like how was that process for you being a first-time director i it was different because i act i acted first and then went into directing so i knew what my actors what they mm -hmm. had been trained to do because justine um, she's trained in Meisner and I'm also trained in Meisner. So I know her process. I know Jack's process. And so I found that it was easy to communicate with actors mm -hmm. because I've acted myself. Um, I'm not really that great at camera. I'm just starting to do that now. And so that was definitely more difficult for me being able to communicate what I was looking for, um, mm -hmm. with John, but John, automatically understood what I was wanting. So that was a lot easier. Wow. I always hear as a fellow actor too, and just talking mm -hmm. to some people in the film industry that I personally love working with directors who are actors because mm -hmm. it was sometimes it's so much easier to communicate with your actor and to yes. communicate what you want from them. Cause you know, you know what, what we can do, what we can't do, mm -hmm. what's more natural, what's more organic. So I, Definitely. and also I have to say, hearing you talk about like, this is an intuitive actor and I've seen John's work and it's that, that intuition and knowing who you want to work with is a huge part of directing too. So it's, it seems to come natural to you. So that's just my own little opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you hoping audiences get out of watching your film OCD? And why do you think it's so important for films like this, like part of the voices of neurodiversity? Why mm -hmm. should we have more projects like this? I hope others find comfort in the fact that they're not alone in their experiences with neurodiversity. I I myself have OCD and I'm also neurodivergent in other ways. And I feel like having representation on a small student film level in with OCD and other neurodivergent um, disorders that we can show that all of us have some of these experiences or that there's 
that you're not alone in these experiences. And I think that's really important to see yourself represented on a screen um, and know that you're not alone. Couldn't say it better myself. Absolutely mm -hmm. agree. And since this was your directorial debut and you are still such a young artist learning so much, what did you learn in this project that you will take with you to your next project? Um, I think trusting actors is a big one, like letting them do their their thing. I am when I direct, I fully believe that improvisation is so important because that's how you get some raw emotions. Mm -hmm. And so having this be mainly voiceover and that they're not really being a lot of dialogue, I let the actors kind of take a scenario that I gave them and just run with it. And I think I got some really raw moments out of them from that. And I am so glad that I chose to do it that way. And I think I will continue to have improvised moments in films because it really allows a lot of emotion to come through. Yes, totally agree. Love that. Trust the actors, mm -hmm. let them roll with it. And yeah. you also edited this up as well. So yes. how was it wearing all these hats? Did you have any favorite hat in particular? Um, Def, I've always been a pre-production girl. I love writing. I love producing. But I would say I, I really loved directing this uh, probably the most. I, I'm i not really on the technical side of filmmaking. And this was one of the first projects that I edited that was over like two minutes long. And it was very, it was a daunting task. It was very difficult for me at first. But this film actually allowed my editing capabilities to grow and I'm definitely a lot more confident in my editing skills now after this and I'm very thankful that I edited this film myself so I could grow from it. Absolutely. So many firsts in this film. That yes, is incredible. It really was. And it's here at Garden State Film Festival. Mm -hmm. How did you hear about this festival and how does it feel to have OCD screening? Here? I actually heard about this festival through my program um, but I just love, as an artist and as a filmmaker, being a part of the local community and the local film community. I think that's so important. And so this festival was like, I was so excited to apply to it with OCD. And when I heard I got in, I was ecstatic because I think having a local community for film and being able to meet other filmmakers in Jersey where I grew up is amazing. And I Absolutely. think that's, yeah, it's such a great opportunity. Yeah, to not only have your work seen and grow from it, but the networking opportunities mm -hmm. at Garden State Film Festival Definitely. are incredible. I'm so excited for your block. Will you be there? I'm hoping to. I'm hoping that school allows me to be there because I'm now in college. So oh my I'm gosh, well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. All right, well, it is, we'll let everyone know when it's playing, but hopefully you won't have anything to do on a Sunday. Let's hope you'll hopefully. be there. Yes. And last question for you, Emma Lynn, is do we have any future projects? Do you have any goals for mm -hmm. OCD or any next projects in the works? I do have a next project in the works. It's actually a three-part um, short film. It's three short films that are all from different family members' perspectives in a three-person household. And I'm hoping to have that together soon. And I'm hoping to submit it here for next year. So. Let's Okay, we have it here on tape. So this will be your <laughs> accountability. I hope to see that at Garden State Film Festival 2025. But in 2024, this year, we can see OCD. Let me tell everyone how we can see it. It will be playing Sunday, March 24th from 9.15 to 11.45. That is the High School Films Block at Berkeley Hotel in the Kingsley Ballroom. Hopefully we will see you there, Emma Lynn. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about your film and congratulations again. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So we'll see you guys all at the festival this year. Thanks for watching.